Hi, I'm Jody Barrows, and I want to welcome you to our video blog. One of our viewers sent in that she would like to see a little bit more about the pineapple blocks, so our video today is going to be on the pineapple blocks. And if you have any questions or anything that you would like to see a video done for, for special help on the website, just send us an email and we'll get to it and add it to our list, and that way everyone can, can receive help with that question at the same time. We are constantly helping people adapt patterns, figure fabrics, and um, help work out any little kinks that they have anywhere. So don't be afraid to call or email. We'll be happy to help you with all of that. Now with the pineapple block, this is option 12 of the square and a square system. And it is probably the easiest one to do, but on the other hand, it can be one of the most um, confusing or hard to wrap your brain around. So let's go right to the cutting table here and get started with our pineapple block. Now, I'm not going to actually show you today how to do the sewing of the strips on the blocks. The, um, the two hour long DVD has the option 12 in full length on it. So if you want more help with the pineapple of sewing the strips around them and how to do that in a fast, speedy, chain piecing method, then please go to our two hour uh, DVD to that resource and watch that completely from beginning to end. Okay, so now here we are back with our cutting. And um, you start out with your square in the middle and the strips on the side. This is the basic square. This is how every option starts out. So you're going to start out just like this. You're going to, it's a square, so you're going to start out with the 90, and you just put the 90 right in the tip. Your black lines go right over the seam, and the grid line goes through the point. This is just very basic um, square and a square here. Just leaving the fourth of an inch on all four sides. Now remember, once you start making a cut, no matter what option you're working on, you've got to keep it square. Even if your uh, lines in here are not lining up exactly the way you want to, once you start making cuts, you have to keep the outside edges square. It doesn't really matter on the inside uh, at this point. It's already done. So you don't have any control over it, but you do have control whether your block is staying square on the outside. And it's that your, your block is staying square or parallel with these grid lines. These grid lines are on here to help you see, okay, my block is square or, oh no, my block is wacky. Don't want wacky blocks unless you're doing um, one of the option uh, sixes, which could be a wacky block. Okay, so we've trimmed our block, leaving one fourth inch on all four sides. Now, one of the things about the pineapple block that is kind of confusing with people is, is that there are basically no rules. You can start out with any size of square you want, and you can start out with any size of strips you want. But you keep the strips the same size as you continue to sew around. So we've just taken our square, and we've sewn around it again. I happen to have started out with a two and a half inch center square and one and a half inch strips. So when I sew around it again for the second time, I'm going to continue to use the one and a half inch strips. And you'll go in here and do the same thing, putting the 90 right inside the tip of the new square. And so far, this is just uh, pretty similar to the option two, except the strips do get bigger and wider because your square is getting bigger and wider. So here we go, doing all four sides, leaving the fourth of an inch and we kept our strips the same size. Now we also want to talk about color for just a minute here. As we take this off, see how now we start getting um, a more of a blunted corner than what we normally get with our square and a square. A slightly blunted corner is good, but when you start getting a large blunted corner, that means that your seam, normally it would mean that your seam is too big or your strip wasn't wide enough, but with the pineapple, this is what we want. We want to start getting these blunted corners underneath here. So we'll come back to that in just a second, but let's talk about color. Notice how we started out with a light in the center. You can start with light or dark. It really doesn't matter. But you'll start out with, on this one, we started out with our light in the center, and we did the same color on all four sides going around, and we did it an opposite of what we're calling a dark. So we started out with a light, and then we go to a dark, and then we went to light again on all four sides. And so far, we've only worked with four sides of a square, so that's worked. That has worked. I want you to also notice how, see the corners of this inside square, they're light, and see they're pointing to what you put on, the, on that side when you sew strips on again. You'll be putting a light. See, it's pointing to a light, pointing to a light, pointing to a light, pointing to a light. So I did lights on all four sides. Now when I get ready to sew around this block here, 
I know that I need to do a dark because see how the square is pointing to the dark. It, this is a dark and it's pointing to a dark. So when I put my strips around on this one, see here, we get, this was our square in the middle now, and we put the strips on it. So see how I went dark. So after I trim up the dark strips, my next ones that I sew around, see how these are pointing to the light. We'll sew light on the next one. But where most people start getting confused and needing help is when they start getting what I call a hole in the quilt. And the hole will happen where the two strips come together and touch or don't touch. And normally it happens on the third row. So see, this was the first row, this is the second row, and this is the third row. Like I said, normally it happens on the third row. But depending on the size of square you started with and the size of strips you're using will determine exactly when it happens, but most of the time on the third. Now when you're looking at the top here, it looks like you have a nice point in all of these corners and it looks okay. But when we open it up or to flip it over or go inside, we can see how that when these seams come together, there really isn't enough fabric in that point for that to be a good healthy seam. So this is when you start getting holes. And when you start getting holes, that's when you start cutting with the edge of your ruler. So I'm just going to go in with the edge of my ruler and place it. And if you want to use one of these angle lines to help you keep your block square, you can. I'm using a 90 degree, um, one of the, the lines coming off of the 90 out here on this strip of fabric and I'm wanting the edge of my ruler to line up with the edge of that strip or that blunted area of this white one underneath here. So I'll make that cut and see how these are started to, to get blunt. So now I'll turn it and I'll do the same thing. And I, now it's important, I've made my first cut, I want to keep my unit square. So I've, I'm just using any line down here to line up on the bottom of my pineapple. And then I want my edge to line up with the edge of that strip and I'm just cutting right through here and I'm going to do this on all four sides I'm just making sure that my piece is square and I want it to go right along the edge of this light strip and when we get this last one done here and it's very important to keep your square square on the outside edges that's what these grid lines are for so I'm lining it up on a grid line, it doesn't matter which one, any of them, and I'm keeping it square as I go along, and I want the edge of the ruler right along the edge of that cream colored strip. So now, there it is on the back, and I don't have a hole there anymore because I've, I've cut through there, trimming that off. So now when I flip it over, I now have eight sides. I have four, four long sides here, which the arrow is pointing to and then I'm starting to get four short sides here and this is actually when it turns into a pineapple block when you actually have eight sides that you're working with instead of the four now when I sew my next row of strips on I know what color to do because see how my creams are pointing to the creams so see this would be my light or my background or my cream that I would sew here 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 and here four sides you're only going to work with four sides at a time and see how it's pointing. It points to where you sew next and it points to what color you want. So see how all of these are pointing to the long sides and I would go back in with a light colored strip to go on there. Maybe I'm alternating between these two or maybe each light row gets different. You can start doing anything you want with the color. Then when I go back in and trim these up from here, this area I'll come back to the short sides and I'll sew four on it as a round and notice how it's pointing to the dark. So dark, dark, dark. So hopefully that those tips and hints have helped you a little bit with the pineapple. So let's look at some other. These are the ones using the 90 with the square in the middle. And on this one here, this is called Pineapple Picnic and it's in your Advancing on Two book. And let's just come zero in on one of these that you're, you're looking at, this one here. And let's, let's look at the block uh, after learning what we just did. Here's our square in the middle. We went with a dark this time. So now these are all light. And we trimmed normally, leaving the fourth of an inch on there. We go back in with the dark and trim normally, leaving the fourth of an inch on all four corners. And once again, notice how the dark corners 
point to the darks and see how those all go out. And that's, that's one row or one side you're working on four at a time. And then notice how these all shoot out and go left. And the color is very important in the pineapple. That's what creates the pineapple block is the color all doing what it's supposed to be doing. See, now you're working with four that are darks and four that are lights. So first was dark with a light and a dark. And then so when we went with this row, see this is row one, row two, row three. See how we started getting these blunted areas here. And so when we sewed next, we did, we did the light. And you just keep expanding or growing out. You can make your pineapple block as big as you want to or as little as you want. Now, lots of times when people start trying to put the pineapple block together on this one, see how we did a sashing and a, and a setting square? Most of the time, people try to take their pineapple blocks and butt them right next to each other, and then they have some complications with trying to get these corners to all line up perfectly. If you feel like your pineapple blocks are not going to match up nicely, then just put a little sashing in there with a setting stone, and look how you get this additional design going on. It's like a churn dash that you see, and then it just falls into the traditional pineapple. So there's always a way to fix your blocks and make them turn out good, no matter how they, they turn out. If they're butting up nice together and you want to put them together that way, or if you want to use a setting or a sashing to put them together. So let's just take this one that we've got trimmed up here and put it into our quilt. And we'll go ahead and turn it so that the darks and the, would all stay and the lights would all stay coming out. Now, these are all squares, so you're always going to be working with the 90 when you do your trimming. Now, the cool thing about the pineapple is you can start out with anything in the middle. Instead of a square, you could start out with a diamond in the middle. So this is our pineapple quilt that starts out with a diamond in the middle. Just all scrappy and all made from plaids and um, little, uh, little pieces, uh, little stripes, just some fabrics that you maybe you wouldn't think about putting together on your pieces. Now with the diamond, you work with all three angles. You're going to work with the 90, you're going to work with the 120 and the 4th, and you're going to work with the 60. Now once again, our videos are just live in our studio, so you may hear a phone or even a dog barking on there, but we're just going to keep going with it. So with the diamond, we're going to work with, first of all, we're going to work with the 60. And the 60 goes in this sharp point up here. So when you sew your diamond, and if you need more help on starting out how to cut your diamond and how to sew your diamond, then go watch those videos on the website or on um, the two-hour long DVD. But see how the, not, the 60 just goes right in the tip of that diamond unit, and it will leave your fourth of an inch. And you'll flip it and trim it on this side. So you'll start out with your square, your diamond in the middle with your strips on the side, just like you did here with the square, but it will have the diamond in the middle. And you'll use your 60 to trim it up because that's the angle of the diamond. And then when you go and use your 120, you want to make sure you use the 120 with a fourth because you want to leave that fourth of an inch off of the tip. So the 120 goes in that wider angle of your diamond. And after you get it trimmed up, maybe you can see this rectangle right here. That is what it looks like. You have your diamond in the middle with the four long triangles on the side. So now you're working with a rectangle. A rectangle has the same properties as a square. So you're going to go back in and use the 90 when you start sewing these strips on and trimming them up. You will use the 90. So when I have these strips, these strips on and I'm ready to trim it up, I'll just go back in here with the 90 and put it in the corner of the rectangle that you've got and trim it up. And probably um, with the um, diamond, since you're working with a rectangle, see how these two ends are still nice and sharp, but these two are blunted. Anytime you start getting the hole or the blunted area, that's when you just use the edge of your ruler to trim it up, just like we did here on the pineapple, how we just used the edge of the ruler to put on there to trim that unit up. And I think the diamond unit makes a really cool uh, pineapple look. Now, there's next two I want to show you. Start out with a triangle in the middle. 
So here, this is our center of the block, and this was a good triangle. And see, it just has three sides, so you're going to sew on three sides. And most likely, unless you're starting with really big center and small little ones, by the time you get to the second row, see how you start getting all these nice blunted areas. The triangle is that 60 shape uh, on your ruler, the 60 angle. So you're just going to put that triangle in the tip of that 60 to trim it up. And that gives you your nice long side here. And of course, you have to do that to all three corners and just keep sewing your strips around on that. Now this one is, um, all three of these that I've shown you here are in the Advancing on Two book. And this one in the book is uh, done in a kind of a light pink, uh, lighter colors. And it looks kind of like Chinese lanterns going together on the quilt. And so the one in the book is called Chinese lanterns. And this one was just done in dark scrapping. Now here's the block right here like this. The next one I'm going to show you we've called um, uh, stacking pumpkins or jack, uh, jack-o'-lanterns because it's the same one, the exact same size. All we did was switch out colors for it. So we made it look like that you have the light, uh, this is like a pumpkin with the face in it, a jack-o'-lantern, and the light is inside. So here are the eyes coming out of the pumpkin, the nose, and the mouth. So as you start out with the center, that's your nose, so make a glowing nose, and then go in with your pumpkin colors on, on row two, pumpkin colors on row three, and then on row four, go in and make some light eyes and a glowing mouth and then just go around your pumpkin a couple of times in pumpkin colors. Now, and then the very last ones make them look like the grass at the bottom and the night sky behind it because see here's your pumpkins all stacked up on top of each other. We even did a little 3D stem and leaf at the top of our pumpkin. So, and then just go in and use your cute um, fall uh, fabrics to go ahead and, and give it just a simple strip border. So these are the stacking pumpkin ones made exactly off of your pattern that you have in Advancing on Two. Just substitute your colors, give it light eyes, nose, and a mouth, and keep the pumpkin colors as they go around. And then if you want to, put your little 3D stem on there. So hopefully you've learned a little bit from the pineapple demo and jump in there and just get started doing it. Remember to go to the two hour long DVD that uh, you uh, can purchase. It's $23.95. It goes through all the options in order and it goes into detail with the option 12 pineapple if you need more help. Thanks for watching and remember to send in your request and we'll get them filmed. Thanks. Bye-bye.